Nissan has launched its new microactive which gains sporty exterior upgrades as well as higher levels of interior specification. The next generation Micra is set to arrive in South Africa in 2018. Until then, fans of the cute city car will have the option of the sporty active version. The single derivative, the Vizia priced at R159900, retains the current 1.2-litre petrol engine capable of 56 kilowatts per 104 newton meters, mated to a manual transmission. The grille has been redesigned to host the circular badge and chrome V-shaped motif. The bonnet, front fenders, headlights and front and rear bumpers also have a refreshed design. Inside it benefits from a new fabric design, new center cluster and refreshed instrument panel. The microactive has manual aircon, front power windows, Bluetooth with audio streaming, a 12V power socket, steering wheel adjustment and foldable rear seats. In terms of safety ABS, EBD and brake assist, driver and passenger airbags, a Sofix child seat anchorage in the second row, rear headrests, rear fog lights, remote central locking, speed sensitive auto door lock and an immobilizer. Why purchase a microactive? According to Nissan SA, the first microactives being sold in South Africa will also benefit from the addition of touchscreen navigation and an infotainment system, which has been fitted as an added accessory at no additional cost to the customer. The system comes with TomTom -tom mapping with live traffic, Bluetooth hands-free music streaming, USB input, a built-in music hard drive and it's compatible with all iPhone iPod models. The touchscreen navigation and infotainment system can now play a host of audio formats, including CD, VDC, DVD, MP3, MP4 and DivX. Optional extras included a reverse camera, tire pressure monitoring system and reversing parking sensors. The trendsetter pack has smoky black alloy wheels, a chrome exhaust finish, a rear spoiler and mud guards. The Microactive, cost R159900, comes with a class-leading 3-year or 9-year service plan and a 6-year or 150-00km warranty. Based on the existing N connector, this style addition takes things up a level, adding a host of upgrades. The exterior of the car sees the addition of black bezel headlights with daytime running lights, black door mirrors and 18-inch black diamond cut alloy wheels. Inside, there is a 5-inch touchscreen infotainment system, which includes Bluetooth connectivity, DAB radio, O and USB ports, as well as a rear-view camera. It has one powertrain option, a 1.2-liter petrol pair to a 6-speed manual, which produces 113 bhp and 190 Nm of torque, capable of taking the car from 0-60 mph in 10.5 seconds and up to a top speed of 118 mph. This grade is the latest addition to the recently revived Pulsar model family, the first model of which was produced in 1978. Prices for the n connector style edition start from £17,925 and the model is available for order now. A range of improvements for the Nissan X-Trail SUV has been revealed and the updated car is on sale now, priced from £23,385. The most significant alterations are the updated exterior looks and the addition of a suite of autonomous driving systems, dubbed Pro Pilot by Nissan. The Fauci Lifted X Trail's redesigned front now features a deeper, lower and more prominent chrome accent that, together with the number plate, give the impression of bisecting the front bumper. The front fog lights are now rectangular and more neatly integrated into the X Trail's face, while additional chrome features both at the front of the car and along the lower portion of the X Trail's doors. The headlights have been tweaked too, and although they remain similar to their predecessors, the optional Adaptive LED headlights have improved cornering functionality. Other aesthetic improvements included a redesigned rear bumper and parking sensors that are now flush with the X-Trail's bodywork. 
Nissan has also been busy where technology is concerned, making its Pro Pilot suite of autonomous systems available on the Foch Alifted X Trail. This setup unites the Lane Keeping Assistance, Adaptive Cruise Control and Autonomous Braking Systems, allowing them to control the steering, acceleration and braking in a single lane on highways during heavy traffic congestion and high-speed cruising. Although the Foch Alifted X Trail is largely unchanged inside, it does feature a new flat-bottom steering wheel. New options include an updated Bose stereo for the top-spec Tecna trim, heated seats for second-row passengers, a redesigned gear lever for the automatic gearbox and a hands-free function for the powered bullet luggage space has grown from 550 litres to 565 litres too. A DAB radio is now standard across the X-Trail range, while the autonomous emergency braking gains pedestrian detection. Auto hold brakes have also been added to X-Trails with a manual gearbox, keeping the car stationary, both on hills and on the flat, for three minutes, after which point the electronic handbrake will apply itself. The updated X-Trail is on sale now, priced from £23,385. It'll get you a 5-seater model in Vizia trim with a 161bhp 1.6-liter turbocharged petrol engine. Nissan has recently been discovered to have filed a trademark filing for the IMX name with the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The filing, discovered by AutoGuide, was made on September 8 and specifies its use for vehicles, including electric vehicles. The similarity with the IDX name used for sports car concept unveiled at the 2013 Tokyo Motor Show is obvious. This has led to speculation that IMX will be the name of a similar sports car concept powered by an electric powertrain, one possibly production-bound. Nissan has previously shown electric sports car concepts in the form of 2011's s Flow and 2013's Blyde Glider. The Blyde Glider was tentatively confirmed for production but the project never really got off the ground. With the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance last week confirming plans to add 12 electric cars by 2022, perhaps we could finally see Nissan launch an electric sports car. Of course, there are also rumors of Nissan unveiling an electric SUV concept at next month's 2017 Tokyo Motor Show, sharing a platform with the recently revealed second-generation LEAF, so it's possible the IMX name could be used for this concept. An SUV would be the most logical body style for Nissan's next electric car given the popularity of the segment. It was only in May that a senior Nissan executive confirmed that the automaker's next electric car will in fact be an SUV. Stay tuned for an update. How wrong I was. And how I immediately loved the space that the Pathfinder gave us. Instead of cramped up and squashed in, we were spread out. Space. I realized, actually equals luxury. It was lucky because this was the week I was tasked by my husband to buy plants for our backyard, we've embarked on a garden reno, so I needed a large car to ship the plants around. Here's what I thought of the Nissan Pathfinder TV6, which is top of the range in the AWD petrol version. How did it drive? It was smooth, quiet and easy. The V6 has power and you can feel it, which made me feel quite strong on the road. Coupled with the height and the size of the car and I felt quite formidable. This was a car I could drive the kids around in and feel seriously safe and secure while doing it. Don't underestimate that feeling. For me, that was one of the things I loved most. It steamed up the hill near my house where I test all cars on without taking a breath and wasn't slow off the mark either. Heavy? Yes slightly, but I even liked the heaviness, it added to the rock-solid feeling. 
the only time it was stiff was when I tried to squeeze into a parallel park and turning the steering wheel all the way got a bit tough. Same when I had to do a tight three-point turn. You do also feel the size if you are trying to squeeze into a small park as it is a big car. But it does give you seven seats, so, there's that. How safe is it? It has all the fancy modern stuff you're expecting. The reverse parking camera, the front and back parking sensors, it even beeped if I got too close to the car in front of me and of course has auto emergency braking which means it brakes if you're cruising along in traffic and get distracted. There are blind spot warning lights, front, side and side curtain airbags which extend all the way to the back row, plus a total of 4 tether points and 2 esophix points. It gets a 5 star ANCAP rating. How easy is to use every day? I found it extremely practical. The two seats in the third row pull up easily, there is no struggling, sweating or swearing when you're moving the middle row forward to get into the back row. And there are cup holders galore, with two in the front, four in the second row and four in the third row. Holy guacamole, that's ten cup holders. Plus there are six bottle holders. Let there never be arguments between the children again as to whose cup holder is whose. Also way down in the back second and third rows are air vents and they're not those weak vents either. You can feel the air strongly, important if you've been lumped in the back. The car actually has tri-climate control so you can have three different temperatures going if you like. Then there's a huge sunroof which is purposely placed down the back half of the car and brings much loved natural light to the third row. I'm obsessed with automatically opening boots, because who else here has been holding the children, shopping bags, toys, possibly a scooter and dragging a blanket then had to struggle to put everything down and open the boot? Yes, that would be me. This week it was actually plants I was carrying, but with this car, as long as you have your keys out, you can hold the button down and hey presto, the boot lifts easily. Thank you, inventors of snazzy car features. It's got a swanky two-leveled front center storage bin, and storage envelopes on the back of the front seat. All in all, I would say this is a very easy and practical car to use. How spacious is it? It's a big step to get up and my mother actually complained about it, but if you're okay with that then get ready to step into space. It's positively breezy, with a ton of room in the front seats, loads of legroom, lots of space between the passenger and the driver and everything is laid out beautifully. In the second row, my daughters, four and six, literally thought it was a playground and they were swinging around in all the space they had. Q party in the back seat. And in the third row, I climbed in and sat for quite a while, quite comfortably. At 5 inches 4 I'm not exactly tall, but just don't go putting a giant back there. It was decent enough space and the second row seats do move forward so you can find the right amount of space for all rows. And the boot. Oh the boot. With the third row down there is a whopping 1354 liters. With the second row down, in case you need to transport, gosh, maybe a bed? It grows to 2260 liters. Even with all seats up there is still space enough to lay a suitcase on its side in the back, or load up with groceries or school bags. What's the tag like? Um, it works. Is that a letdown? Yes, I would say it is. Look there's nothing technically wrong with the multimedia screen, I mean, it's 8 inches. It has a decent enough sat nav and I was able to sync my phone easily, but there is no Apple CarPlay Android Auto, or even a digital radio which you would expect at this price. However, sound the trumpets here, there are the two screens on the back of the front seats for the passengers in the second row winning. My girls thought it was just amazing and even though the only DVD I could find was an old David Attenborough Animals documentary, they loved it. Yes, 
There were other outlets to play different types of things but I am always going to tell them we must only watch animals in the car. No Disney movies. It also comes with two sets of Bluetooth headphones which also meant I could play my own music up front while they listen to the movie. Alone time. Get it while you can. How does it look? The interior feels looks and as soon as you step in you can tell you're in a top of the range car. Leather accented seats feel great, the shiny center console is stylish and everything in sight has been well thought out. I did think the leather steering wheel felt a bit hard, as did the top dash, but all round there is a fair bit of swag going on. The seat remembering and moving into position and the steering wheel too, certainly helps. On the outside, the Pathfinder isn't going to win Best Dressed at the Oscars, but it won't be on the worst dressed list either. It's a solid looking vehicle. But look, it's big. It's like your friend that will always stand in front of you in a fight cause they've got size on their side. Does it matter what they're wearing? Not really. And it has a brand new front for 2017 so it looks modern, curvaceous and does the job. How much fuel does it use? Nissan claims 10.1 L slash 100 km on the combined cycle which is more than a 5-seater but you would expect that with a V6 AWD. What does it cost to own? What is the warranty offered? The car I drove has a list price of $66,190, before on-road costs. Nissan covers the Pathfinder with a 3-year slash 100,000 km warranty with roadside assist for the duration. Service intervals for the petrol are every 12 months or 10,000 km. Over the first 5 years you'll realistically be paying around $360 per year for servicing if you do the average 15,000 kilometers.